Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name, as always, is Bloodstained Wings, and today, we have a special painting for you. You may recall my weird angelic tree inspired by a bunch of different artists. Well, I was looking more at weird artists, this is what happens in my life, um, and now I decided I would do this, but at night time. Ta-da! Okay, there's a huge glare on it right now, but I'm telling you that it looks really cool. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures, and at the end of the video, you're going to see a bunch of different pictures of this, so you can really see um, all of the cool details in this, but I am so happy with it. We now have a bloodstained wings tree. Round of applause, everyone. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, if you guys would like to paint along with me, please feel free to do a whole bunch of work in the background in which you sketch a tree with wings and then, um, you know, do it in gesso and then paint out the background in black uh, and then you'll be ready for us. Ready? Okay, go! Okay, hello! Um, so, I don't know how this is gonna work out, but I'm gonna put my all into it. <laughs> you guys saw at the beginning that it turned out beautifully and everything was great. Um, I've been looking at a lot of weird art online. Weird art online. There we go. I can say things. I can talk. Um, particularly I have been finding a lot of art being recommended to me that is, I'm going to say this wrong, but I'm going to try it anyways. Beksinski? You're welcome. Spelling is B-E-K-S-I-N-S-K-E-Y. <laughs> Uh, but I've been looking at a lot of their art, and it's just like mind-blowingly awesome and cool. Um, and um, that artist is one of the ones that inspired the um, the the angel tree in the first place. Um, and so I saw um, a painting that they did where the angel, where the angel, no, where they did one that was like the daytime and then the nighttime. I, I'm not sure that it was supposed to be that, but it ended up looking that way. And I was like, I want to do the thing. And I really liked how the angel tree turned out the first time. If you haven't seen the angel tree, I will link it in the description below. Not in the eye. I don't know how to do the eye, so no eye. But like, in the, uh, in the description below, there will be a link for that, so. Uh, that's gonna be a thing that we're gonna do eventually. Yeah, so, um, anyways, he did, he did a painting that was very, he, they, I'm not sure, I should say they, pretty sure it's a he, but they did a painting, um, that was like nighttime and daytime, and I was like, I want to do that. Um, and so, um, I'm gonna try to do a nighttime version of my, um, I was gonna call it an owl tree. It's not an owl tree. It is the um, angelic tree, my very weird angelic tree. Um, so I'm gonna have it start with the yellow ochre, I think in the middle. And by the middle, I mean around the tree as you can tell, around the tree. Now, I did do a lot of prep work in regards to this. I did do an under sketch for this, um, just like last time. Although last time I did a bunch of shading, I did not do the shading in this one. I just did the underpainting. It was just like, that's fine. That, that, that's fine. <laughs> shading is for people who have time on their hands. <laughs> and not me. Uh, all right, brush. There's a little bit of white on this brush, and that's that's good. I want that. I just want to kind of remove some of the um, initial paint strokes with some circular strokes, uh, because that'll help remove the like straight up lines that you can see here, like that. Just want to remove that from this guy here. All right, I'm gonna add more white and more other colors later, but for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of the Viridian Hue, and I'm gonna apply the Viridian Hue to like this space here. And I think that that Viridian Hueness um, will be weird and cool. 
That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for it to be weird and cool. Just like last time with the weird and cool. Um, <laughs> that's how we roll here. We roll with the weird and cool. Um, so I'm just blending these two together a little bit. Apply more of it in the corner up here. I'm gonna blend this all together eventually, but for now, we're just applying the base colors and then we'll blend. And then, uh, then we'll worry about what that's actually going to look like. <laughs> I don't exactly have a plan for this, um, other than I have the one that I did previously, I have that to look at as a reference, and then, um, you know, nighttime ideas in my head. No, no real plan. Um, I think that from there, I think if I apply this brown, I've got a brown that I've mixed um, alizarin crimson and sap green together to make like a really interesting and dynamic brown. I think it's gonna make a, for a really cool transition from one color to the next through here. I think it's gonna be interesting, I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how interesting it really is. All right, I'm gonna take my big brush and I'm gonna just start blending these together. There we go. Blending that together. And blending all of this out. All right, so now we've got our base on. Base on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is start by highlight. I think I'm going to focus on the tree first. Just going to very gently add some white glow to our tree here to make it glow. And now I get to decide if I want to use alizarin crimson on the tree at night to make it like spooky spooky or if I want to keep it with that like blue vibe that I had in the other ones so that it still looks blue these are these are all options that I I get to keep in my head <laughs> vote below with your phones push one for blue push two for no that's no <laughs> I don't have a phone number for you to do that that it'll work um <laughs> There we go. A soft yellow glow. Very soft. Which is great, that's what I was looking for. Something very soft. Now I kept this brush purposely, did not touch any of the other colors, so that I could blend out the edges into more yellow. Because like I've said many times, yellow, not very strong. It's not even strong against white. So <laughs> you just got to kind of work with the yellow as best you can. There we go. All right, I'm actually going to take this color, I think, and like make some cloud shapes. Just some like really vague cloud shapes that are like being highlighted by said tree. Really, really vague shapes. I'm not looking for anything in particular. I just want the sky to be more than empty. I'm, I'm blending it out almost entirely, just so we're clear. It's just giving little wisps in the sky, so it doesn't look so dark. And I figured that's a good place to start, right? And start with little wisps. Move to some other shapes later if I, if I should feel the need. 
you know, if I want to have like another glowy rock or something, I can do that later. But you gotta start with the sky. It's very blown out on my camera here. Um, it's not so blown out in, in real life. I don't know if I can change that or fix that. Terribly sorry. There's like a, you can kind of see if I block out some of the, some of my, all the lights. <laughs> um, maybe if I, all right, nothing I have done has made it any better. Um, so, you know, uh, giving up is in order. <laughs> Anyways, it looks very dark on the actual uh, painting, but this looks very bright on the uh, on the recording. So you'll have to forgive me that it looks so bright in the recording. I uh, I'll try to share some pictures at the end of what it looks like because I have a feeling there's just too much glare to deal with. It's like that's all like that's all black up there, and yet it looks white. So you know things and stuff and stuff and things um okay so i didn't get a chance to think about this being red or blue didn't get a chance to think about it i think i'm gonna go red why you ask i have no answer actually i'm gonna go i think with cadmium red I'm not even gonna go alizarin red. I'm gonna go cadmium red. Okay, so if we're going cadmium red, um, I need to mix that. Oh, not with the goop, I forgot. I forgot how I did this painting. It's been so long. I did it with paint thinner. Here we go with the paint thinner. All right, paint thinner and the red. I'm just gonna grab this brush and just kind of blend it a little bit out. So it's not just such a harsh line. Especially right there. Don't want the harsh line at all over there. Oh ho, you guys still can't see it. I think using goop is probably better than using paint thinner now that I'm looking at it because it's picking up the, uh, the titanium white and messing with it and I don't want to do that. Sorry if my head is in the way. There we go. It's, this is one of those things that's going to take me a long time to do, and you guys are going to see basically none of it. And I'm so sorry that that's the way it has to be. But you'll see it when it's done. If that counts right. You're like, no. Now, the point of this is to see what you're doing. Well, you can see that I am brushing things. <laughs> so I'm just following the um, gesso lines that I have underneath um, and applying some of the red following those lines. Um, I really like the idea of these wings being like, I don't know, red. 
Maybe it's because they, I have a vision. I'm having a vision of them being bloodstained wings. And let's be honest, I, uh, that's my name. <laughs> and maybe it's about time I did a self-portrait. Um, <laughs> I have actually been thinking about doing a, a self-portrait for real. Um, but I am not a portrait artist. Um, and so the idea terrifies me a lot of doing that. I did do a portrait um, on uh, on here once. Uh, it's a speed painting because it was otherwise it was gonna be like a three hour painting. Um, and I did um, I did Bob Ross. I did the ever famous Bob Ross. Um, he's hugely influential in my life um, as I started painting because of him. Um, as, as a lot of painters can claim. Now, mind you, my art has gone all kinds of different ways from his art, but, you know, the basis of starting to paint, um, and, like, getting into the joy of painting is definitely from him, and I feel like that counts. <laughs> There we go. Hopefully things are starting to sh take shape now for you guys. I remember the last time my problem was that I was too afraid of contrast. So I'm going in pretty heavy with the red. Um, hoping that that means that this painting won't take as long. That's what I'm hoping. Who knows if that's actually going to happen though. Not I. You can kind of see it down here a little bit and a little bit up up on the top here. I'm trying. I'm trying to add the contrast so that you guys can see it. What I should just do is uh, fast forward this part because it's probably going to be very boring. But... You never know, maybe somebody wants to see me do all the crazy details. Oh, that's, that looks really good, actually. Huh, that's really dark down there and I like it. <laughs> I like that it is uh, bold, shaded, unabashedly. I was thinking that, um, like the wings should be closed at night um, and that they would be like open during the day. But then I was like, but this way it could glow. And I got real excited about the glowy. So I don't know, maybe I'll try again and make it closed at some point. Maybe I'll do it like a winter painting and have the, have the wings closed for the winter time. And maybe that'll make more sense. Why would a desert have a winter? You know, they can. <laughs> Deserts are determined by precipitation, not by temperature. So, you know, they can have winter too. Not a lot of deserts have winter. That's not true, I think almost all the deserts have winter. Right? Because like the Australian desert does, and the American desert does, and all of the like um, Arctic ones, they do, and the Antarctic ones, they have winter. 
So, yeah. Desert. Winter. It's a thing. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if my mic is picking up the bird sounds, but there are bird sounds. <laughs> it's really quite nice actually in the background. I am so glad we went with red. This was a great idea. It was a great idea. Oh, it's so like edgy and like dramatic. The blue was like soft and cool and weird. This is like bird of prey. <laughs> I say we as if you guys helped in deciding. So I'm just gonna say that yes, it worked. When you push two on your phone, because obviously you did, um, it worked and you did the right decision by picking red. So, you know, vote now to make me the most popular billionaire in the world. <laughs> push four on your phones. I'll let you know how it works next week. Mm, no, I won't, because it won't work. <laughs> but thanks for trying, anybody who did try. Much appreciated. Just trying to blend this. With some kind of eminence. Sorry, I was listening to Mushroom Head earlier today. Things happen. You listen to music. What are you going to do? Um, you're going to cry because this blended terribly. Yay. Blend. There we go. <laughs> Third brush. That's what we all need. Just more brushes. Wee. These wings got a little out of hand over here when I was uh, painting them. A little out of hand, but it's all good. Maybe during the day something happened. That's why it's all fucked up. Now that was not a swears. That was uh which is a word um, that means um, uh, fluffled by birds. That's what that is. Totally not a swears and also not a made up word at all. That's, that's for reals. <laughs> I know you guys totally believe me. All right, let's just do that whole thing again. There we go. Much better. Oh yeah, you can really see that now. See, it just needed a little bit more time to exist. up that contrast a little bit.
if you are painting along at home, uh, thank you for painting along at home. Uh, and for doing all of the prep work in regards to this, that's hella awesome. Why would you do that? I have no idea, but uh, I'm, I'm very, very pleased that anybody would even consider being inspired by my very weird angel tree. It's uh, the coolest thing. But uh, if you are uh, and you're having trouble getting your paint to flow, use more goop. Use more goop and it'll help your paint to flow a little. Oh, we're like almost, I've got, I've got a brown wrist. Uh, that's okay. We'll get to that part later. That's fine. That part's just really blended. <laughs> really, really. Now this kind of painting is all about taking your time, going slow, enjoying the process. So please feel free to do as much detail work as you would like when you're at home and uh, not doing it for a YouTube video. But I also paint relatively fast, so I don't feel like I, I have any pressure to go any faster than I already am. So. That's probably good. We're going to come back and do some white highlights, I think, afterwards. But let's get the darkness in first. I think it's going to really help with the illusion that it's glowing when we do highlights. The, um, I want it to look like it's glowing from like this part here. So that's why that part is the lightest anyways, but the idea is to help make that look even lighter by uh, making some of these other parts look darker. I'm not talking very much in this video. I hope that's okay and you're just enjoying the random sounds that are in my house. Including the sound of my refrigerator. Some random birds on occasion. A car that drives by. If we're lucky, we'll hear the uh, guy who strapped a lawnmower to his bicycle. So that he could have a bicycle that is motorized. <laughs> If we're real lucky, we'll hear that guy. Anybody else have one of those guys in their town?
Okay, we're almost done. We just got a little bit more to go for our tree. And then we can do all the highlights. Looking snazzy. Wait, I want to do this part again. Some of these don't look as... It got more bold as I went on. So I'm going to just redo some of these so that they are equally as bold. Okay, looking nice and bold. Okay, you guys can see a lot more detail now. So that is good. Um, I'm going to um, get some white going on my brush um, with the goop again. And I'm just gonna try to like highlight, I don't know, something through here. And it looks like it's glowing from this center point. Take my blendy brush that I've been using and kind of blend that in. There we go. All right, try to see if we can get a little bit more action. A little less conversation, you know what I mean? <laughs> of course you do. This is actually starting to remind me of uh, in Fern Gully. You guys ever watch Fern Gully? I think I talked about it before in one of my videos, but um, love Fern Gully, huge fan. Um, and uh, the trees like all of a sudden glow at night and are like talking to each other. And Maggie's like, I always love you. I'll always be with you. Remember the lessons, Krista. And then she bursts into like a million things. And you're like, no. It's a really weird part of the movie, honestly. <laughs> Think, thinking about it, I'm like, well, that was weird. But like as a kid, I like cried and was like, no, Maggie. Yeah, I just want to have this be like weirdly glowy in the middle is what we're looking for. Weird glow. I think we are succeeding with weird glow. Oh, you guys can really see some like details going on now. That's good. It's not just like a glow in the middle. You guys can actually see some things. That's, that's good. We have changed the way that this looks by adding highlights and lowlights, and now my camera is like, aha, I know what I'm looking at now. And I'm like, yay, camera. <laughs> Welcome back, camera. Glad to have you. Um, yeah, I'll just do a little bit more on this guy here. I don't want to go too out from the middle, 
because otherwise this would be daytime anyways given how bright it would be so i think if i just centralize the highlights to just in the middle um that the rest of it with the with the daytime version of this i did do a lot more highlights throughout the entire thing highlighting like each an individual little part but i think that just leaving it like this leaves it more to the imagination um all right so now we have our darkness um Blending more out here. Do I want to have like it like really catching on the edge of things? I mean, yeah, but I'm I'm not so good at that. Um, should I try anyways? That's the question. Should I try anyways? You know what? Let's use a palette knife. Let's use a palette knife. Let's get some white on a palette knife. Um, let's mix it with some of the green. Maybe. Have like a no. Let's mix that with yellow ochre. I want like a weird kind of cut. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice and weird. And then maybe if I don't like it, I'll scrape it off. But I'll have like a cloud that just kind of like you know. What I want this cloud to be. I don't know. Like this. Did it. Cloud. <laughs> and now I'm going to mess with it. And if I don't like it, I will scrape it off. But. I just wanted like some more existence to the sky. And I wanted it to be weird. And the best way to get things to be weird is use a palette knife. There we go. So I'm just using tiny little circles as you can see with my wrist here. Um, to kind of pull out the shape of this and make it more cloud-like. Um, because as much as clouds are not circles, they are. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but it made sense to me. I really like that cloud. Oh my god, it's so cool. And like the darkness around it really helps to like amplify its weirdness. Oh, all right. Who's ready for another one? Me. I'm going to do it right through like that over there. I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and fluff that out. Of some of the excess paint on this brush. Because I do want to maintain that darkness, I just want to also have it blended. There we go. Wow. It's it's cool. It's cool. This is cool. We are in the land of cool. I, I may hate this later, but for now, thinking that this is cool. Try to get some of that fluffy cloud action. There we go. Yeah, oh, those are weird clouds. Oh, -ho. excellent. Okay, we were looking for some weird clouds. We got some weird clouds. Now, I need to think about how there, the rocks are in the other painting. Just gonna pull it out for reference here so that I can remember how these rocks look. Um, I'm gonna use this dark brown color that I mixed for these rocks. And you know what I just realized I forgot to do? The entire tree trunk. That's okay. We'll come back and do it in a moment. Uh, this rock was like this. And then there's another rock that is like this. Listen, it's not exact, and that's okay. I'm not very good at replicating my own art perfectly, but that's okay. Should I use some of the red as the shadow color on the tree? 
Maybe I'll just leave it the way it is because I kind of like it. Listen, I kind of like it the way it is. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the red through here to like darken up the tree. I'll just gently blend down. There we go. Yeah, just a little gradient there. Maybe we'll add another one over here, underneath these guys over here. To make that part look also shaded. Blending with our finger. Yes, because that's how you do sometimes. Could I have used a brush? Absolutely. Can you guys even see that I did anything? Probably not. That's okay. All right, let's grab some white and mix it with that brown color. So we have an extra weird brown color to do highlights on this rock here. Gonna grab a little bit more of the brown so it's slightly darker. It's kind of a purpley brown. I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Just like a little smidge of it hitting this rock over there. Excellent. And it, oh my god, it really does look like that tree is glowing now. Oh, cool. Um there are dark bushes in my reference painting. Can I also get them here and be visible? Probably not, but you know, we'll put them in. We'll put them in. They're there texturally, but I'm not sure anybody can actually see them. <laughs> I love that sky though. Oh my gosh, that was a great idea. That's yellow ochre mixed with the viridian hue. And then I just kind of pushed it about on top of that black. Oh, it looks trippy. Um, I'm very proud of this right now. I think it looks really cool. Um, I definitely nailed that like glowy tree look, which is what I was going for. Um, so thank you for indulging me, everyone. Um, and thank you for the inspiration person who I'm not going to try to pronounce again. I thought about pronouncing his, their name again, but then I decided, no, that's a bad idea. I don't speak whatever language that is. <laughs> I, I barely speak English and French. So asking me to, to speak a language that is not English or French, even French sometimes is, is a bit of a stretch. Um, unless, you know, it's for excavation purposes, then I'm pretty good at French. For, for excavation purposes, you know. If I need to know where you're, you know, if you're going to be working on, on the railway, I can, I can ask that question, but... <laughs> Uh, so I will post more pictures now of this in better lighting so you guys can see um, all the cool textures. Wow, look at that cool texture. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys really enjoyed this. If you guys want to see more art um, in different time or different t seasons, please let me know in the uh, comments below of what painting you want to see at a different time um, and how I would do it. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to say thank you so much for watching and for uh, joining us today, for letting me indulge in this. I really appreciate that. Thank you also to all of my Patreon supporters who continue to support me at this time. I very much appreciate every single one of them. Uh, sorry this painting took so long, but uh, thank you for joining all the same. Uh, you guys are the best. Please remember that you are loved, you deserve to be loved, and I will catch you next week. Mwah! Bye!